everyone. Welcome to Remote STEM Class. Mr. Dowd here. Happy Monday. I know everyone had a fantastic weekend. Um, so we're all done with our bridge project for Google Earth. So today we're going to go ahead and start a new measuring project. So before we measured bridges, right, just the length, and then record it. This time we're going to be doing um, area. So length times width for squares. We're going to keep it as a square. Uh, make it easier for us so we don't make odd shapes like an octagon or something because it makes the math a little bit harder. But anyway, so we're going to do area of um, places, and we're going to do it with the I'm feeling lucky button. Okay, so the I'm feeling lucky button brings you to a random spot. Okay, it's going to be somewhere random in the entire world. We're going to go ahead and do it the same way we did with the measuring for a bridge project. We're going to take a screenshot of the place, and then you're going to record your answers in the Google Sheets. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and get started. So first I'm going to make a Google Sheet. Blank. I'm going to call it... I'm feeling lucky. Area. Okay. So the first is going to be the place, and the second is going to be area in. I'm going to do square of feet. And if that's too small, we can always change it to miles. And let's just bold that up. So. Now I'm going to go ahead and open um, Google Earth. It's going to be down here for me. Like I said all the time in the bridge project, it's going to take a second to launch because it is a very big uh, application. Sorry, I just got an email. Anyways, uh, so this is the I'm feeling lucky button right here. So. I'm going to go ahead and press that. So I'm going to a mosque in the Syria is where it sent me. So this mosque is in Syria. So it looks like this area here. So it has the pillars just like the four pillars in a mosque. So I'm going to go to 2D just like I did before. And I'm going to do the area of this. So go ahead, click, click. I mean, I know this won't be exact, but... It'll give you the idea of getting an estimate. And it will also um, give you kind of, you're learning about new places because I don't think any of us have been to Syria, have they? I know I haven't. Maybe Mr. LeMay has because he's been kind of everywhere. So it's going to be the perimeter. Actually, I'm going to write down the perimeter also with it. So I'll do perimeter and area. So the area will be in square feet. And the perimeter will also be in feet. So I'm going to go ahead, make another one, and say perimeter. I spelled that wrong. Of course, it doesn't fix it for me. How do you spell perimeter? That's embarrassing. P perimeter. Perimeter. In feet. Let's just bold that up. So the name of this place is the, uh, I'm going to just <laughs> make it easier for myself. I'm just going to copy it. Oh, but I can't copy it with these here. Copy that. So instead of, I just X out of <laughs> the Google Earth. <laughs> Happy Monday, guys. Happy Monday. Let me reload that up. <laughs> And I got to redraw, it looks like, because the last measuring went away. Do that quickly. So next class, I'll go ahead and write it down, and I will um, put it on the recording for you. Okay, guys? Have a great Monday. I'll see you guys tomorrow on Tuesday. So today I'm making a black bean chili, which I may have made in the past or not, I'm not sure. But 
If it's not, I'm making it again. So this is some pork. There's going to be pork in it and some Mexican spice that I've already cooked with some oil. I'm just going to warm it up a little bit. Okay. And in this pan, which is going to be the chili, I already put some oil in and I'm going to put some onion and some of these suckers, these little jalapeno peppers, which are very, very spicy. My eyes are already water, watering and I haven't even eaten them, just from cutting them up. So I'm gonna put those in and them up. So if you like spicy hot, you'll like this. Okay, so these are cooking. So while those are cooking, After these cook for a bit, I'm going to add the pork. I probably should have taken more seeds out, but I'm not eating it. <laughs> I don't like chili, so it won't hurt you. All right, so I'm putting some of the pork in right now. And it also has a spicy sauce in it. Putting some tomato paste in. My family loves chili. I'm not a huge fan of it. So. Turn that down a little bit. Put more pork in. It's a good meal for lunch or dinner. Uh, you probably would have to add something to it. If you're somebody that likes to eat. If you don't like beans, you won't like this either. But people make chili different ways. Uh, maybe that's why I don't like it, because somebody never made it the way I liked it. Okay, so the tomato sauce is in it, and I'm going to put um, some water and some, <coughs> see, I'm coughing. You know why I'm coughing? From It's so spicy. All right, I'm going to put the black beans in. Oh, it's spicy. Boy. Okay, so I'm going to add some a quarter cup of water and I'm going to let it cook <coughs> for a little bit and then it'll, <coughs> it'll be done. Let me stop this now so I can get the water. Okay, I am back. So I put some tomato paste, some more tomato paste and some water. Some I'm letting it cook. I'm gonna put some salt and pepper in it. Okay. Now these big green things are jalapeno peppers, so if you don't like spicy hot, <laughs> then you wouldn't want to pick those out. But Again, you can make it as spicy hot or with anything you want. You don't have to put pork in it. All right, so that's pretty much done. I'm just leaving it on low right now so it it like cooks in its own 
flavors and gets all the flavors together and makes it nice and hot. And the longer it sits here, the better it'll taste. So I let it sit here for <coughs> about five or 10, 20 minutes maybe, just on low. Make sure you mix it up, don't put it too high. And then you could just let it sit on the stove, whoever wants it. And, um, you know, they can eat it whenever. And then you could um, put the rest in the fridge and heat it up. It's a good meal for a freezing day like today. Hi guys. I hope that you were able to make a little collection of objects to create a still life. You didn't have to have any certain objects. You could just pick random objects. Like you can see, my objects are pretty random. Okay, so then you want to arrange your objects in an interesting way. And that's your still life. Also, I hope you had a chance to make yourself a viewfinder. And you're going to need a piece of paper and a pencil. I taped my drawing paper to my drawing surface to the table so that the paper doesn't move around because you're going to be holding your viewfinder in one hand. Okay, and then you're going to be drawing, holding the pencil with the other. So it's helpful if you tape your paper down so it doesn't move around. All right, guys, so the purpose of the viewfinder, again, is so you can just focus in on one part of your still life. And it just helps you to create an interesting composition. Once I find that really interesting kind of arrangement and my little viewer, my viewfinder shows me something that I really like. I'm going to stick with that and I'm just going to draw what I see. So right now, I think I'm going to stick with what I have right here. So it's a little tricky because you're going to have to kind of like hold your hand or hold your arm in the same place. Because if I move my arm away from me or if I move it closer, it changes what I'm seeing inside my viewfinder. So let's do the best we can. Okay. I'm going to keep my viewfinder right here so I have, and, and just kind of do a little um, like memory check, I guess, and try to look and think, okay, my tomato for me, the tomato is in the bottom right, that little blue glass is on the left side and it's lower left, and then the brush is kind of diagonally um, kind of breaking through that left upper corner, and then my large round kind of like pot shape or object is taking up most of the right top corner and then I have like that blue plastic ball on the left. So those are some things I just want to keep in mind in case I move my viewfinder around a little bit by accident. All right so right now I'm just going to be um, starting my drawing. I'm looking through my viewfinder because I want to keep it just like that. That's what I want to be in my composition. So here we go. I'm going to have you guys watch me draw. Hold on one second. All right, here we go. So as I showed you, my viewfinder is in place and I'm going to start my drawing. And you can just do kind of like a quick sketch first and then you can go back later and draw in some better details. So I have my tomato is there, my little glass, and these drawings don't have to come out perfect guys. We're just kind of starting to get used to this using a viewfinder. So don't worry if your picture doesn't come out amazing. And if you want to, uh, right now I'm kind of looking, I'm closing one eye and looking through my viewfinder with one eye. That sometimes that helps a little bit. And it helps you focus in on what what the image is inside the viewfinder. So of course your still life is going to look different from mine. Whatever the objects are that you chose will be what's in yours obviously.
So I keep kind of looking down at my drawing and then I'm looking back up at through my viewfinder. So that's pretty much what I see in my drawing. So go ahead and um, try to make a sketch with your arrangement, your still life arrangement, okay? And use your viewfinder. And next time we'll add some values to create the look of some shadows and some light areas and create the look of form on our objects for our still life. Good luck guys. I know this is a tricky one. Just do the best that you can, okay? Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Virtual P. I'm Miss Reedy. All right, so today I'm going to continue to work out the cardio. Hope you had a great weekend, uh, but we gotta get back to work. So we're gonna do, with me, six exercises with 20 second intervals. We're gonna do some side jumping jacks, some windmills, uh, we're going to pretend we're going to do some jump roping and then we're going to do some squats and then we're going to do what's called climb the ladder. All right. So hopefully you have some space to get a little bit of sweat on and let's get to work. Hey, happy Monday, guys. Welcome back. Uh, we're going to do a band workout today. So hopefully you have your bands. Okay, today we're going to work on our deltoids, which are our shoulders, our biceps and our triceps. Okay, let me show you how it goes and I'll give you a minute and we'll get on with the workout. Remember, when you're doing these exercises, do eight to 10 reps at your pace. If you gotta do less, then do less, okay? So, first thing you're gonna do is you gotta sit on your band, okay? Make sure your band is sitting secured. Our first exercise for our deltoids is a shoulder press, okay? After your shoulder press, wrap your bands up, we're gonna do a bicep curl, okay? After that, the band behind your head, we'll do a tricep extension, okay? Remember, Eight to ten reps. If you get tired, do less. Okay? I'll give you a minute to get ready.
watching Enrichment TV, Gators. Remember, work hard, be nice, and we'll see you tomorrow. Oh,